Hey, good evening, everybody. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Cain and Abel. Um, so Cain and Abel brought a couple offerings to God. Abel brought a blood sacrifice of uh, animals and stuff to, to God. And Cain, he brought some fruits um, from, from his garden to God. Now, God accepted Abel's offering but he rejected Cain's offering. And what's interesting about it is it says that he, he rejected Cain and his offering. Now, why would he do that? Why, 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 would, why would he reject Cain's offering? Um, if you look at it, the offering that Cain offered was probably super beautiful, you know? I mean, imagine a fruit basket with, uh, you know, all the little pineapple discs. I mean, of course, he didn't have the ability to make pineapple discs, but pineapple discs and apples and bananas and, um, you know, just a absolutely delicious. You know, you, you could bring it to, um, give it to somebody for, for their birthday or for a gift, and they would absolutely love it. Um, but God didn't. God didn't love it. He thought that God would love it because he loved it, right? So, so he, he looked at that offering and, and he stared at it and it's just like, wow, this is beautiful. God's gonna definitely love this. Um, now it doesn't say exactly why God was angry, um, with him or why he rejected his offering. But see, the thing is, is, um, I'm guessing just out of my mind, I guess, uh, Obviously, I guess um, I'm, I'm guessing that it could be because they knew what God wanted. Um, like maybe he maybe God told him what to, um, you know, what pleases him or something. Uh, and I mean, as we can see throughout the entire Old Testament, you have priests that do animal sacrifices for sin offerings and fellowship offerings and, you know, all the different offerings. Um, and then Jesus himself on the cross became the ultimate offering. Um, and so offerings are no longer needed, but, but back then, so, so it seems like that that's been the trend the entire time, uh, that, that that kind of an offering is what's pleasing to God. And, um, so, so one of the things that's sitting in my mind about this is Abel's offering was disgusting. I mean, it didn't, it didn't really make any sense. You know, I mean, who, who, who would do a blood sacrifice at first? I mean, unless God told him to, but you know, I mean, it's gruesome. And, uh, it's like, I mean, if this was, if this was to be presented before you, if you had a dead animal that was bleeding in front of you, that was, um, you know, burn, burning up on a, um, on an altar and a fruit basket, which one would you choose? Well, probably the fruit basket. I, I mean, if, as far as uh, beauty is concerned, I'm not talking about taste. Um, but God rejected it, and and the whole, the thing. So the thing that sits in my mind is sometimes when we bring things to God, it is highly possible that what we're bringing may be something that we feel that He wants. But it's not actually what he wants. Um, and he might not be pleased with it. Now, consider, um, consider some, uh, someone at a restaurant. Let's say that you're a customer at a restaurant and you have in mind exactly what you want, exactly what you want to order. And so the person comes up, takes your order and the waiter comes up and takes your order and says, okay, well, uh, what would you like? And you tell them exactly, word for word, all the way down to the details, exactly what you want. And they say, okay, that'll be right up. Um, and on the way um, over to uh, the place where they're making the food, that waiter's thinking, why would they want that? I know something better that they might want. Um, and so I think I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to rewrite this order, and I'm going to surprise them, and I'm going to give them what I think is the best. Now, the food gets cooked, brought back to the table, and the customer's looking at it like, what is this? This isn't what I ordered. But the waiter's like, all excited, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's so, I, I, I thought about it, and I, I looked at your order, and, um, and it looked good, but this looks better. 
And, um, and I think that you should try it. Um, and the customer is going to be like, I did not ask for this. I didn't ask for that. Could you please take it back and go have it remade again? And so the waiter is just going to be like, how could this be? How could it possibly be that they didn't like that? Um, so they're going to be like, all right, okay. Um, I'll, I'll do it that way, you know, grudgingly, just like Cain, you know. He went and go, killed Abel and got mad at God. You know, that waiter is probably mad at the customer. Um, so so later on, the waiter uh, just decided, okay, this customer is asking for some crazy stuff, but I guess according to him, it's right. And and so so he takes it, the order, all disgusted, just like, oh, okay, whatever. Here, make this. I'll bring it out to him, you know. Um, and so they make the food again, all the way exactly the way the customer asked. And then he brings it back out to the customer, and the customer is just full of joy, just Thank you for making it right. Thank you for for giving me what I asked for. That really, really makes me happy. You, you've made me a happy customer. And and see, it's the same thing with God and us. Um, we need to really be deep inside the Word of God because it's inside the Word of God where you can actually find out what His will is. What He's asking of us is in the word it's in the word and um like one of the examples um that i've been that's really been on my heart lately is uh throughout the entire bible there's been angelic encounters there has been um people who have uh interacted with supernatural things uh in many many ways right it's throughout the whole entire Bible, and I, I mean, it, it, it's all over the place. And when Jesus preached during his walk, and when Paul preached, and when, when Peter and the apostles preached, um, they didn't only share love with others, like we're supposed to do, but they also, they also released God's power, right? They, they, um, they preach the gospel with signs and wonders following. I mean, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that uh, that some people have a form of godliness, but they deny its power. And um, Stephen, but right before he was getting stoned, he said, you always resist the Holy Spirit. You're always kicking the Holy Spirit out of the church. And um, so here's what I believe about the church. I believe that all the different denominations and stuff that have been created have created division between people. And, and what else it's done is, um, it's implemented multiple levels of, uh, of tradition and, and ways that things should be done in church. And, and when you think about this, the presence of why why do we why do we seriously go to church we go to church to seek god we go to church to hear from god but but see the the thing is is nobody um not or not nobody many people in the world right now don't believe that god will show up tangibly they don't believe it they don't believe it because they haven't seen it and and the reason why they haven't seen it is because they haven't been giving God at church the offering that he's asking for. He wants us to come to church to worship him. And yes, I know. I know every, everybody that we, we sing a couple songs, do the announcements, sing a couple more songs, you know, depending on the denomination and, and how, how that goes. But see, the thing is, is have you ever felt like you're in worship and you're really connecting with God, and then all of a sudden it stops, and announcements come in. You're just like, oh, I was feeling, I was feeling getting close to God, and and I want to keep that feeling, want to hang on to that, and so 
my vision of a of the church um that would that, that would be acceptable to god would be um uh no time limit keep the sabbath holy and um have church on saturday you know you we don't need to get into all that technical stuff but that's what i would do because it follows what he's asking for and um but i wouldn't set a time limit on how long church is how long the church services see there's some people um in in a foreign country that uh that has like a, um, a lot of snow or something it was like the himalayas or something i don't remember what it was but um but there was people that would hike 20 miles to go to church to be able to be with people and to seek god and some people even died along the way the dedication and that is absolutely phenomenally amazing you know and i can guarantee you that they didn't go over there just to worship for an hour and then leave it's not that way see on the seventh day god rested and that's what he wants us to do he wants us to rest in him and he wants us to spend our time with him on that day we don't need to be working on that day you know what he wants us to come and he wants us to seek him now um there are several congregations that have implemented this sort of thing and what happens is they call it breakthrough when you worship in one accord okay not not people thinking about grocery shopping or thinking about problems that we have in our life but leaving all those outside the doors of the church shutting our phones off shutting off all electrical devices coming in with a heart to want to know god to want to seek god for real to seek him and to and 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 so what they do that they do that and then when everybody worships they worship in one spirit they worship in one accord um and they lift up praise to god and and what ha and you, you don't have to raise your hands or do any of that stuff um it's a heart thing you know and and when you come in and you do that what happens is when when you worship god in this way it raises up praise to heaven and and god can actually um and god will see that praise he'll see that praise raising up and the more we stay on it the more we stay continually singing and singing our hearts out to god the more we draw closer to him and once you draw close enough you want to know what happens next the glory of God tangibly comes down out of heaven into the room and the place gets overrun by his presence and once God's presence is in is in the church that's when you fall on your face before him and you worship him and 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 when and when you do that and, and you don't do it just because um it's the right thing to do you do it because you're in his presence when you're in his presence your knees will be like jelly and you will want to be on your face before him because he's so awesome and um and then you wait just wait just wait on him and and he'll give the next instruction on what he wants to do see the church um, um a lot of the church in this day has been one way it's been we we talk to god we never hear back from him we never get we never um allow his tangible presence to be invited in and so it could be that the offerings that we're giving him you know i, I I've, I've been thinking about this for so long you know how could it possibly be wrong to go into church and to sing a song and then do announcements and then sing a couple other songs you're worshiping from your heart right what's wrong with that and then listening to a sermon what's wrong with that i mean that's 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 god's word that's coming into you and i think i finally got it it's not what god asked for if you read corinthians in the bible he tells you how the church should be and it shouldn't be the way that it is even with communion I mean, I was reading in Corinthians about communion, and and it says um, uh, it says that if you eat, you know, before uh, and you don't wait for everybody else, 
that you're drinking, you're, you're eating and drinking judgment on yourself. And you need to examine yourself. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to get in there so that you can identify any darkness that you have in you so that you can confess those sins and ask him for forgiveness and forgive others inside of you so that you can just be pure and blameless before God um, in church. So, um, so that, that, that's, um, that's my vision. I would, I would love to go to a church that didn't have put a limit on how long it takes for God to show up. You know, I mean, a couple songs is awesome, but it's not going to bring in the tangible presence of God. And the reason we don't know about it in this day is because we haven't done it. There hasn't been a lot of people that have done that. And that's why it's unknown. And the reason why we haven't seen miracles and all the different things that Jesus did and the apostles did, and Jesus said the things that I do you can do also, the reason we haven't seen that is because we haven't been doing that. We we need God's presence and the power of his Holy Spirit to fill us. Now, I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit for salvation. I'm talking about the filling of the Holy Spirit, the operation of the spiritual gifts. They're, They're not nice professions that everybody has. It's spiritual and it's given to each one of us in a specific measure and we can desire greater gifts and um and that's how that's that's how it's supposed to go that's really truly the way it's supposed to go and when it comes to giving giving should never be under compulsion it should never be a requirement it's something that you decide in your heart that you want to give to God. You want to give back to him because you recognize that what you have is his. It's a recognition. It's a reverence. It's not an obligation to um, to support a ministry, although that does take place when you do it. It's a re- it is recognizing God and loving him in that way. You know, and you don't even need to pass around the thing. You don't need to do that. Just leave you know an offering box or whatever on um on, on the out on the outside of the sanctuary so that people can secretly give so that because god says he rewards those who give in secret don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing it's it's such it's such a passionate way of showing god that you love him just showing god that you that you're head over heels in love with him you know, there's there's so there's so many different things, and uh, this video is getting pretty long, so um, I'm gonna end it here. But I'm serious, and man, if there's anybody out there that wants to do something like this, a vision could be to start in your own home, get a couple people who. Who, who lo- know and love the Lord and are willing to just worship and worship and worship to bring his tangible presence in and and call on them go worship together and and go after him and um, and his tangible presence will come uh, anyway um I love you guys uh, have have a great night and I'll talk to you soon grace and peace